So this video may seem a little basic, but it is a support issue that I do see quite a bit. So I've been wanting to do a video on this for quite a moment. So what I'll do is take this cube in edit mode and we'll just bevel this edge. And then I'm just gonna add a couple of sub divs with control R and roll the wheel. We're gonna take this single edge here and I'm gonna press V to rip it, but I'm gonna right click and cancel. And we're just gonna pretend like that didn't happen, right? And we're just gonna jump in a box cutter, the fastest way to cut a box. And we're gonna do a cut and it worked out. So we're gonna do another cut. And this time it actually worked out for us, but let's get in here and actually rip a little more. We just rip this and we leave it. And we just have these kind of nasty lines here, but we see that the booleans begin to break down. And that's because this mesh has become non-manifold. My favorite way of searching for non-manifold in meshes is to basically select all and go under the select menu and under select loops, you can choose select boundary loop. And by selecting boundary loop, it'll highlight basically the openings of your mesh. And from this point, you could actually go in vertex mode by pressing one and then right click and choose to merge by distance. And you can see over here in the bottom right that it mer removed nine vertices. So if I were to select all and I go under my select menu again, and we choose uh, select boundary loops, we see that there is no selection. And that's basically how you deal with manifold issues in your mesh. But we do have tools that can also create non-manifold meshes, so they must be used with care. For example, if I were to press Alt X and bring up our mirror tool, right now we've defaulted to modifier. I'll press H to expand help. If we control scroll, we can jump over to bisect mod, which will delete half and then add a mirror. So we'll just do that. And now we've deleted half of the mesh and mirrored it. And if we press control tilde and bring up the helper, we can look at our modifier stack and really look at what's going on here. So we have a Boolean, a Boolean, a Boolean, and then we are splitting the mesh in half and mirroring it at the end. So if we turn it off, this is what's actually getting evaluated by the mesh. So we turn on the mods and we see that we're cutting into a non-manifold mesh. The solution for this is rather easy. We just move this modifier up to the top and this will be the modifier for making sure the mesh is manifold. So now that the mesh is manifold, as of this mirror modifier, these booleans are now being evaluated to be on a manifold mesh itself. I know this probably sounds very basic, but if I wanted to continue cutting on this while also mirroring, mirroring I would press Alt X and I would press A to add a new mirror mod. And we would just add a mirror on the axis that we desire. In fact, press A and we'll just add a mirror on the Y. I don't know why that messed up there. And we see that we have kind of a sandwich going on where this one is the modifier that started it all. We have our booleans and then we have our mirror. So if we were to perform another Boolean cut, we see that we're able to cut on this mesh as if it's manifold. I'm not recommending that people work in this fashion, but when it comes to dealing with manifold and non-manifold meshes, a degree of awareness can be the difference between having a good and bad experience with box cutter. And I do aim to create troubleshooting tools in the future to help people identify and fix these issues because it is becoming apparent that there should be a way to at least highlight to people that these issues are occurring so they can continue flowing on their journey. But with that, I'll wrap up this video and I thank you for watching. In closing, I do want to talk about the hotkey of shift tilde, which I'm a big fan of. I noticed a long time ago that the hotkey of shift tilde was just empty in edit mode. And this is something that I set up manually. So I'll tab into edit mode with a mesh and under the select menu, you know, we were talking about boundary loop earlier. If you right click this and you assign a shortcut, I will assign it to shift tilde, which actually does nothing in edit mode. And now when I press shift tilde, it will actually select this. This isn't a hard ops hotkey. If I added another hotkey, you guys would massacre me. So, you know, hotkeys are a very uh, deliberative thing now. I'm, I always throw a fit now when people add hotkeys. I'm like, the users will riot. Uh, it will become a meme. We're going to have as many hotkeys as Blender. But I am a big fan of having the hotkey of shift tilde to just quickly grab things in edit mode. So I just wanted to at least close out on that because if you're dealing with a mesh that's variable and you're just not sure where your hole is, like I'll just grab some verts and just rip some holes to make life complicated. And we see that, you know, the mesh actually kind of looks fine. You got to rip a lot to, you got to rip it good. Sometimes you can just have a single vert in space and it'll be the thing that will cause you the most pain. 
But there's also other ways to deal with it, right? Like, um, let's say that I actually wanted these rips as part of the design for some strange reason, and I wanted them to work out. Then I would go to add modifier, add a weld, and here I am back in the tutorial. And just by scrolling it up the stack, we can actually see just the placement of the weld in our stack helps the situation. We just click and apply, and we're good to go. I mean, we could take this through the old mod scroll by shift-clicking it and we're able to just see exactly what we have going on here. So with that, we'll close up this video and I thank you for watching. So the generic Blender viewport can be a little bit um, flat when it comes to seeing transitions on surfaces and things and going through the settings to adjust everything and setting up the defaults is just a bit of a tedious process. So for that reason, uh, in the alt V system, we actually added the ability to go to EVHQ, which will just set your viewport settings to show the surface a little bit better, allowing you to kind of read things a little nicer whenever you're kind of doing this modeling just to explain why that's going on as well.